Welcome to Parenting Intuitive Kids. I'm Katie. I am Jesse. And this is where we focus on empowering the new heart-centered society that is our children. So come along with us and let's have a talk. Jesse. Season wow. two, four. Episode, Episode four, four, right? Yes. And we're all going to talk about do you really believe in yourself or are you suffering from imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome. Oh. I, you know, that's something uh-huh. um, I really like this topic because that's something I have personally like suffered with most of my life. And I like in a lot of the times, like even my 15 year old just a couple weeks ago was like, mom, I don't know who I am. And I'm like, you're 15. You're not supposed to know who you are, you know, but because I think these kids were told, like they're told to know who you are. Like, cause he's getting the question all the time. What are you going to be when you grow up? My goodness. He's 15. He's 15. Uh, my 13 year old like, gets asked all the time. Like, so have you thought I'm like, she needs to be happy. She doesn't need to know anything else. That's it. You know, so I think imposter syndrome, it's something that we are so conditioned into. Right. Because we don't really give ourselves a chance to learn who we are. And, um, as we grow and so we, we have these, I don't know, these thought processes and the conditioning of, of our environment and, and who we're supposed to be like the boxes we're supposed to fit into as a child. And syndrome is something I have definitely suffered with throughout my life. Yeah. Have you? Well, oh, yeah. Okay. Of course. Of course. What is it? The, the verbiage in the Bible, whoever is free of any sins to throw the first time. Um, okay. So whoever is house. free of ever experiencing imposter syndrome. What is it? Throw the first stone? The first <laughs> like stone everybody will raise your house. hands. <laughs> um, but make sure you're not throwing it from a glass house, right? Yeah. Isn't that what the yeah. saying is? But no, like, and so recently we just actually just went to India and it was a really good trip. I mean, nothing like, you know, people always say, you know, they go to this magic land and <sighs> then they have these like ex- uh, to India and you know always hear about these people who go to these sacred lands and they had these like massive enlightened like events and things that happened to them and it was really wild because we you know because I always thought you know through my awakening journey or my spiritual journey that it was like is this really happening Mm-hmm. Am I is or like am I making this up? Like it, it's the imposter mm-hmm. syndrome mm-hmm. of how mm-hmm. could this be happening? Because I'm I'm a mother who spends her day living in a house in a forest, hanging off the side of a mountain in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Like my life is very um different. It, it's different, but it's very mellow. It's very mm-hmm. low key. It's yeah. very you know slow, and it's very. Uh, mindful and you know but I have five kids and you know my husband works a lot and we have a dog and we have we have to live in society and we have to do all these things and but when we were in India we got an opportunity to go to an ashram and sit with these monks these Jain monks and you know and I told after I left it took me a couple days to even vocalize this because I thought how narcissistic of me to think this way how wild and crazy of me to think this way. But in finally, I was talking to Powell about it. And I was like, two days later, and it took me two days to get the guts to talk Powell to him. Powell's her husband. My husband. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, Powell, I was like, you know, meeting those monks was really good for me. And he was like, why? Like, did you have like an epiphany? And I was like, no. But what I saw was... Yeah, you know, because like we went there and we, you know, the whole family went there. So we had our kids and we had the toddler in tow. And, you know, I saw those monks get irritated with my toddler a couple times and she wasn't even doing it. She was just dancing around and she was being a four year old girl. And, you know, and I told him, I was like, you know, it's very easy to be peaceful when you have given up everything and you're sitting in a room where you are meditating and you're having philosophical conversations for 12 hours a day to reach that level of enlightenment. And it's very different to remain peaceful when you have this, mom, 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 you know, like, and then the noise. This way, this way. I know, like, and the noise of the world and everything at you. I was like, it was, I go, you know, was, I go, because it showed me that, I, cause, and cause we were having like in depth yeah. philosophical conversations with these people. And not only was I keeping up with these men, mm-hmm. they were actually wanting to learn from me. Mm-hmm. And here I am a mother of five, 
and that's how I define myself. Like if someone asks, would you, I'm like, I'm a mom of five and then everything else is just added on top of that. But like, I don't consider myself special in any way. I don't consider myself enlightened in any way. I don't consider myself more evolved in any way. Um, you know, and, but when I get pushed too far and I snap, you know, I, I have to sit on the floor and I have to apologize to my children as I'm crying. Mommy shouldn't. Yeah. You know, like we all have anger. Mommy should not have expressed it. I feel like you can get the good, nice mommy or you're going to get the crazy mommy. You know, Just like, <laughs> it's getting you know, there. are we getting nice or are we getting savage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because like, we got to decide, um, you know, and so, but like, and so that was a really good for me to see that you don't, because you, we think in our minds, you have to have these experiences or you have to go and somewhere truly sacred, sacred mm -hmm. to have, to find who it is because once again our entire life we have been conditioned to think the answers are external right 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 and especially with but spirituality it's, it's like oh, the answers are you must be doing yoga that's you right you must meditate your journey must look like you this. have to just drink yep. water all day mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. i do have to drink water yes you she do. drinks a lot of water i drink a lot of water mm -hmm. but anyways but basically it's like okay i have to give away all this other mm -hmm. human pleasures mm -hmm. and enjoyments because this is all there is and we came here to this human reality each yeah. one to experience different things and that those souls that's what they came to experience yeah you came to experience who you are i came to experience who i am yeah. and vice versa each one of you and our children came to experience it all yeah at yeah. once yeah and that way they again the reason why we're doing this podcast is because we understand that our children, their first teachers, we are their first yeah. initial teachers. We are the exemplification of perfection. Yeah. yeah. But if we feel that we are imposters, how on earth yeah. are we going to, by our well, example, it, show right? them to be confident within yeah. themselves? I know exactly the whole imposter syndrome, having shifted from one industry to another, yeah. from living abroad and 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 deviating from what everybody else understood that should yeah, be yeah. in different aspects in my life. And I'm still navigating it. But that doubt, that yeah. self-doubt comes again from that fear that we were talking previously on the previous episode, where we are set to a, a rigid set of structures of what it should be, that if you deviate from this, then you're crazy, then you're not accepting, then you're a little weird, or you must be doing something wrong. Yeah. And so that self-judgment, yeah, it starts creeping in and makes us doubt in our authenticity. Well, that's it, right? I ah. think I think the most important word you can use there is authenticity. So yeah, right? it, it 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 starts snowballing, yeah, little by little by little by little. Especially when you're an intuitive, we've said it many other times. If you start listening, oh, that's just your imagination. If you start perceiving mm -hmm. things, oh, that's not possible. That's because in a movie you saw it. I'm like, well, now we know that, yes, they, part of the subliminal messaging is to show us true another alternate truth that exists yeah. in different frequencies as fantasy so they can be dismissed from the physical reality, which is just one. Yeah. And there are many layers of different frequencies that do exist. Yeah. And so that takes away the magic. We're missing out so on much. integrated so much yeah. because of this imposter syndrome that has been inflicted, yet our children are here. We're experiencing all. Why can't I just be accepted? Why can't you see all the all the goodness that I see in you, mom or dad or aunt or uncle or, or teacher, etc.? And they see all this potential, but we don't see it in ourselves. How how do you what what would you advice would you give parents who they like they see their kid is who they truly are, but the kid doesn't see who they are. Like they're, they're verbalized. I'd say it to them. Yeah. Constantly. Well, constantly. Yeah. And go in and have them go inwards. Yeah. It's so easy, but I've had for, for my oldest, especially she is very intuitive and had many of her clairs awakened and being a preteen and now a teen, yeah. it's a very vulnerable stage. And you're not a small mm -hmm. child. But yeah, you're not an adult yet. No. And so that in between transition, it's very you're hard. And that's why we're reason. seeing in, yeah. in in our society specifically now, we're seeing things that we never believed it was even possible. Yeah. We yeah. don't need to extend beyond that. I think yeah. you all can understand what we're going for. And seeing like, okay, you the reason why you're not meant here to fit in as everybody else is because you, who you are 
It's not that you are above anybody. No. It's because you're meant to be exactly as who you are. Yeah. Exactly as that. A very creative child, a very intuitive child, very kind hearted, very compassionate. And that's those are tr traits that makes them very vulnerable to external exposure. And when they can go inward, so like, okay, quiet your mind, go into your heart and ask yourself, what is the first word that comes to you? Yeah. And they'll hear it. And that doesn't matter how many times mom or dad tells you, it sets in because it's yeah. now them speaking yeah. to themselves from well, a that's... higher perspective and it's completely uninterrupted. And it just, it integrates completely. It's like gets anchored. Well, that's, that's the best way to say it. That's one of the things why I think like um, hypnotherapy, like yes. past life regression hypnotherapy is so effective is yes. because it's one thing for like a therapist to, to, externally to express it to you. Mind. And it's another thing for you to, because a lot, like most people, most therapists, they will record your session, mm -hmm. especially past life regression mm -hmm. sessions mm -hmm. for you to go back and listen to. Mm -hmm. And they actually highly suggest you to go back to yes. listen to. And it's another thing when you have a therapist telling you and diagnosing you. And it's another thing when you are, are telling you something, yeah. you know what I mean? And so I think that's huge. Like I know with mine, I, because it is like those teenage years are so difficult and they're so heavy um, um, vibrationally. They're so heavy energetically. I, um, I, we do a meditation where we put on a spacesuit. We put on spacesuits. So you accept only the energies that you want to accept and everything else just reflects right off of you. Because a lot of the times with the imposter syndrome, I think what it is, it's it's projection of the environment. It's projection of the other kids. It's the projection of society. It's the projection of the household. Oh, my gosh. Just... Right? It's it's the projections. And so, and so, like, so something I, like, I, I do this meditation in the morning where before they go to school, we visualize putting on a spacesuit and we visualize locking in that head because they are more prone and open to their, their clear right. audience. Yes. Right. And so when they lock that helmet in, they, they don't have to take on other people's thoughts subconsciously yes. as yes. their own, because yes. it, it's a teenage age specifically. I think that it's so, um, fun. They're so, um, uh, easily, uh, like what's the word I'm looking for? Um, with like, like clay moldable, moldable. Yes. They're so easily moldable at that age. And the thing is, is when you are a teenager, all you want to do is fit in. Yeah. All you want to do is fit in. And so you change yourself mm -hmm. to fit in because you haven't realized the magic is being in your authenticity. Yeah. And then you see that going into college years yeah. and then you go to the work industry mm -hmm. and then you shift back again and then you have different partners in your life and you shift again and you're constantly changing to adapt to be accepted by others but yet have you really accepted yourself that's it and then the thing is is then at the end of your life you have these midlife or like even midlife crisis halfway mm -hmm. through your life and you have these midlife crisis and everybody's like why are you have that well it's because you don't know who you are mm -hmm. right because you've lost your authenticity to fit in Yep. With you know, and so I don't know. I think it's it's something we talk a lot about in this house household yes. a lot yes. is is putting on the space suit and um and unfortunately seeing as you chose me as your mother, you knew you weren't getting a quote unquote normal one. <laughs> so the you average. were meant to stand out. <laughs> you were like fitting into the crowd isn't really an option for you. And so you better get very comfortable in your authentic self. And yeah. unfortunately that's, it's when you are, when you are authentic in who you are, you are a true leader. Yes. You are a genuine beautiful. leader. Yes. Right. And unfortunately the rule, the, the path to leadership is often a lonely one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think this is a beautiful one. And so, actually it just brings me up. We should do the second episode on all about the empaths. Let's do it all and about the empaths. And embracing that authenticity. So. Yeah. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed today's content, we're now on YouTube. Please give us a thumbs up, follow, subscribe, and let's keep the word out. There's amazing content, content constantly. Have a good Thank one. You. Thank you for listening today. For more information, find us at our website, parentingintuitivekids.com. And we invite you to join our newsletter for upcoming workshops, interviews, and further perks. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you. Bye. Bye.